Good evening students. In today's class, we will be doing a special named reaction called as the Woods reaction. This reaction is used to prepare alkanes from alkyl halides. I just illustrate the reaction first. If you have an alkyl halide of the type Rx, where X can be any of the halogens, chloro, fluoro, bromo, iodo. As you know, these are the halogens. And R is the alkyl group. Taking two moles of the alkyl halide with two moles of sodium metal, it leads to the loss of two moles of sodium halide and that becomes a Y product. And the final main organic product that you are interested in is your hydrocarbon RR. Taking a specific example under this category, I take the simplest chloromethyl uh, methyl bromide, another methyl bromide in the presence of sodium by the loss of two sodium bromides leading to a molecule of ethane. Now, as you can see, in this reaction, you started with a reactant of one carbon and you ended with a react uh, product of two carbons. Therefore, you are getting a higher alkane. That is, the carbon number is increasing. Also, since it would always lead to a double up, therefore, the alkane has even number of carbons in this reaction. This reaction is also known as a step up reaction as you are increasing the number of carbons in the product. The most important thing is dry ether. Why do we need a dry ether in this case? The reason being sodium reacts violently with moisture. So even if there is a trace of moisture, it would react explosively liberating hydrogen gas and a lot of heat which may catch fire as hydrogen is the combustible substance and on heating it may blast. So as a solvent we use ether and we see to it that it is dry, there is not even a trace of moisture. I will take another example on the same category. Instead of methyl, this time I am taking a ethyl bromide combines with another ethyl bromide and you have sodium metal. So again, when you heat them, sodium metal takes away the halogens on both the compounds. I am using the abbreviated form of dry ether as DE. Your product formed would be C2H5 bonded to a C2H5 which is nothing but CH3, CH2, CH2, CH3, a butane molecule. Of course, the byproducts in this case would be NaBr two molecules. So you end up in a butane if you start with ethyl bromide. Ethyl bromide has two carbons, your butane has four carbons. Hence again you are increasing the number of carbons in the product therefore it is again a step up reaction and the alkane formed has got even number of carbons. Taking up another example under the same category, what do you think would happen if instead of taking both the R groups to be same, I start with a methyl bromide and an ethyl bromide and I use sodium as the reactive metal again in the presence of dry ether. What you would expect is that again sodium would take away one bromide, the other bromide, two molecules of sodium would take away the two bromines leading to a byproduct of two sodium bromides and the expected product according to you would be a CH3 from the first, a CH2 and a CH3 from the second. Hence you are expecting a propane which is quite understandable but which is not the correct answer. The reason being you are in no capacity to hold on or get one molecule of methyl bromide and one molecule of ethyl bromide and make, make them to react. You actually even if you take a very small drop of methyl bromide and a very small drop of ethyl bromide, you will have 
thousands of methyl bromide in the reaction mixture and thousands of ethyl bromide in the reaction mixture. Thereby, the chances that a methyl bromide would only react with an ethyl bromide are not 100%, which means this is not the only product formed. In this case, there is possibility of this product formation if one molecule of methyl bromide combines with one molecule of ethyl bromide. But there are chances that a methyl bromide molecule may be reacting with another methyl bromide molecule leading to ethane formation. Thirdly, the third possibility is an ethyl bromide may be reacting with another ethyl bromide leading to a butane molecule. Ethyl from one side, ethyl from the other side. Hence, you are ending up in not a single product but a set of three products. So, you have multiple alkenes formed which are difficult to separate. These multiple alkenes would cause a problem as these multiple alkenes would be difficult to isolate. So, the important thing is that we should not use two different types of alkyl halides with sodium to give you the products formed are multiple alkanes and there is a very small difference in their molecular masses. So, their separation is also difficult. So, since they are difficult to separate, hence the formation, this formation which happens should not be done. So, this method is not used to prepare a hydrocarbon with odd number of carbons by using two different type of alkyl halides. Now, what happens if instead of this type of a reaction, I take up a reaction where one of the reactant molecule is a bromobenzene and I react them with sodium. So again I would have two molecules of bromobenzene combined with two moles of sodium in the presence of dry ether as expected the bromines would be taken away by sodium leading to a compound like this where two benzene rings are joined together. This is called as a di Phenyl. This can be formed as we did for the alkyl group. Only thing is instead of R, this time we have a aromatic, a halo arena. Where the R group, instead of R, you have a benzene ring. This reaction is similar to the Wood's reaction but is known as the Fittig reaction since R is changing to benzene. Otherwise, the reaction remains the same. What happens if I take another one where I am taking one compound as bromobenzene, the other compound as methyl bromide in the presence of sodium. Of course, dry ether is understandable. You have to take it every time whenever you have sodium. Again, the sodium matter will take away the two bromines from the two reactants leading with the byproduct of sodium bromide. For named reactions, you may mention the byproducts. Otherwise, in organic chemistry, if you are not being asked the named reaction as a question, you may mention the major organic product in the reaction and there is no need for the byproducts. In this case, the expected product would be methylbenzene, which is also known as toluene. On the parallel lines, when you had two different R groups, I explained that you could get three types of products. On the same lines, in this case also, the expected product apart from toluene could be this, in which case two methyl bromide molecules are combining with each other. In the third case, you have both the bromobenzenes combining to give you a diphenyl. Now, under this category, also you have got multiple products but as you can see the products do not have similar atom molecular masses. The molecular masses there is a large difference in the molecular masses therefore they are separable. So in this particular case you may use two different R groups if there is a large difference in their molecular masses 
and this is considered as the major product and we don't mention these products as these are separate. This reaction is known as uh, Woods since you are using R group as well as Fittick since you are using the benzene ring. Hence it's called as a Woods Fittick reaction. Thank you.